once again. Uh, God, we thank you for each one that's here. Father, you know how we love them, and God, we love this place, and God, we thank you, God, for each member that makes it up. And God, Father, now as we go into this revival service, God, I pray for uh, Brother Danny as you come to break the bread of life. Uh, God, I love each one of these men, Clark and Donnie. God, they uh, always been uh, statues in my life of how to live and uh, how to preach and how to pastor. And Father God, I thank you for uh, the example they've been to me. But Father, tonight I pray. Uh, God, and Brother Danny comes, God, God and, uh, he'll open up the Word of God and yeah. preach. Uh, God, not any different way, but God, like you've blessed him to preach so many times before. Uh, God, I'm thankful for the old uh, story of Jesus Christ. Uh, God, I'm thankful for the old rugged cross uh, where he lives, I might live. Uh, God, I pray if there's well, one among us that doesn't know you in the free pardon of sin. Right, right, right. I, I want you to convict them and yeah, go yeah. to an altar of repentance. Right. Oh, God, we thank you, yeah. God. Uh, again, we pray for those that may be here, God, that uh, hasn't felt your spirit in a good long while. Yeah. Oh, God, may you walk about and uh, touch their heart yeah. in a Jesus. special way. Yeah. God, that we might be up and about your business. Yes. Oh, God, now go with us. Lead God and direct us. And these things we ask in our sweet and holy precious name. Amen. 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 Thank, you. Thank you, brother, for that good humble prayer. Oh, sure. <laughs> Page 326. <laughs> Thank mm-hmm. you. 
Mary's love offering. So if you're interested in giving, if you'll see one of the deacons come down and say, Page 418. <laughs>
where the timbers crawl like The earth was black as midnight beneath the dark and sky. Forsaken for a dead heart on his, our Lord was crucified. And through his bitter anguish, he counted not the cost. He paid the price for you and me, for the timbers crawl. That old rugged hill became a battlefield where the war for the souls of men was fought. And as the battle raged, that held a great day. Victory comes where the timbers crawl. Jesus shed his blood for you and me. Where the timbers crawl. Saved my soul when I was 15 year old on Saturday night. If you haven't been touched by the Lord, Thursday sounds like a good night to be touched. <laughs> Amen. And uh, uh, the song I'm going to sing is uh, I'm standing in my Savior's shadow. And again, uh, the, the walk of being with the Lord is, and being near His shadow starts with salvation. So please, won't you come if you're touched this night? <clears throat> I'm standing in my Savior's shadow. He is walking. Watching over me, I feel the rain, I hear the thunder as He cries for me. Well, okay. I'm standing in my Savior's shadow. Grace will lead to where I'm free. I take His hand, we walk together, and His light shines on me. Though the devil tried to break me, my sweet Jesus won't forsake me. As when I'm in my Savior's shadow, where I'm supposed to be. I'm standing in my Savior's shadow, following his footsteps there. Every mountain, every ocean, he hears my every prayer. And I'm standing in my Savior's shadow, and how he won the victory. I praise him daily, so undeserving of his love for me. Though the devil tried to break me, my sweet Jesus won't forsake me. But when I'm in my Savior's shadow, where I'm supposed to be. But when I'm in my Savior's shadow, I'm who I'm supposed to be. Where could I go? Oh, where could I go? Where could I go but to the Lord? Amen. Amen.
bless your heart. Right? We thank the Lord tonight for uh, what we've been able to witness yeah. in our hearts, in our ears, in our minds. The songs that's been sung for these two men that have come and, and sung from their hearts. And uh, I just appreciate that so much. It's just good to be in God's house. We say that so much, I guess. We say it too much sometimes, I guess. But it's always good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. 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 Brody, thank you for praying tonight. I stand in need of your prayers. I uh, appreciate every person that's here. If you're visiting with us, I ain't a member either, but I feel like one. But if you're visiting with us, I hope to goodness you'll feel at home. And I hope if the Lord gets a hold of you to do something, that you'll do it. Amen. And follow, follow the Spirit of the Lord. Uh, I told Clark a while ago, I pastor a little church on Castleberry Road. It's called Castleberry Road Baptist Church. It's a little church, a small group of people, but I tell everybody it's a mega church. And they said, that little church ain't no mega church. I said, yes, it is. Well, how do you figure that? I said, because we serve a mega God. <laughs> and uh, this week, uh, the Lord has really blessed me with that little mega church that I passed there's been at least one person here from that little church every service, morning and night. And I want to say thank you. And I appreciate it so much. That one person represents that church. Mm -hmm. And when y'all go visit where Donnie's at, if there's just one of you there, you, you represent Crossroads Church. And uh, I just want to praise God for I got a little thought on my heart that the Lord gave me, and I hope to goodness that I can bring it out in a way that you can understand, you can receive it in, and take it with you, and share it with others. But the thought I have uh, is this. If tomorrow never comes, if tomorrow never comes, keep that little section on your mind as we talk to you. If tomorrow never comes, do you ever think about that? I do. I think about it. I think about it. When I lay down at night, a lot of nights I lay down. I said, Lord, I don't know if tomorrow will come or not for me, but if it don't, I know where I'm going to be. Yeah, amen. I know where I'm going to be. And I hope if you are sitting there tonight and you say, if tomorrow never comes, where will I be? And you find yourself knowing that you will not be with the Savior in heaven, I hope you'll come and make it right tonight. There's one thing that I love more than anything when I go to meet is seeing these little kids. I don't care if they're in mom and daddy's arms. Uh, I don't say nothing against having nurseries or nothing like that. But if a kid goes to crying and screaming out, I can get louder than they can. I guarantee you. I appreciate y'all bringing your little kids and uh, your babies. and uh, They're just so beautiful. I, I just sat there. All I've done is stare at y'all's kids. It, it just beats all at how beautiful these little ones are. And uh, I appreciate you, Mom and Dad, bringing your kids. Uh, to church. 
I used to, we just had one. I don't know how in the world we, we could have handled any more because uh, one was enough. Uh, but I see these parents with all these kids, and I, 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 just, I just praise you so, so much. I praise God for you. Um, of course, our little daughter never gave us too much trouble. I remember when we first, she was first born, and we first brought her to church. Uh, I, I was at my first church at Bethany down in Fulton County about 30, I don't know, eight, nine years ago. And the first Sunday we brought her to church, I was up there to try to preach. And all I could see was my little baby being passed from pew to pew across the aisle, and you ought to try to preach to see a little newborn baby being passed around like a football. <laughs> but everybody wanted to hold little Valerie, you know, and so she had a rough night that night, and I mean she had a rough night all night. We were up all night. So I told Vicki, I said, now look, we got to figure out something about this baby throwing. <laughs> and uh, she said, well, dang, I hate not to let them hold her. I said, I got an idea. She said, what's that? I said, told her in on a pillow and hand them the pillow and the baby. <laughs> the baby on the pillow. Because she's sore or something. <laughs> I don't know something really. It was rough on her, and uh, you know what? That worked. <laughs> the next Sunday, she never had no problem that Sunday night at all, and she did real well. But I love kids. I just love kids today. Yeah. And uh, kids and old folks. That's right. Man, I love. Them. That's right. I love. Them. I love y'all. Middle age people too. <laughs> but I love old folks too. <laughs> if tomorrow never comes, if you've never thought of that, I want you to think of that tonight. If tomorrow never comes. Because you know what? That could happen. Mm-hmm. That could happen. Amen. It ain't gonna happen to me. I'm strong. I eat healthy. I run six miles a day. I, you know, I do this. I eat organic food, and I do all this, that, and the other. Let me tell you what. I'm fixing to read something to you here. That's gonna kind of mess that up a little bit. Found in the twelfth chapter of the book of Saint Luke. I'm going to read a parable that Jesus spoke, and it's about a man with six eyes. A man with six eyes. I just kept, I couldn't get off of this. He just kept me going to it. So here we go. And one of the company said unto him, this is the 13th verse of the 12th chapter of the book of St. Luke, reading out the King James Version. I love the King James Version. Some of the words are hard to pronounce. Uh, Of course, I can't pronounce a lot of the words, but but some of them are hard to pronounce. Some of them I don't understand. I have to look them up. But it's some of the most beautiful reading you will ever read in your life is the King James Version. And one of the company said unto him, Master, speak to my brother that he divide the inheritance with me. Somebody must have died and left something behind and that's all that's always a hoorah. Y'all ever notice that? Every time, seems like I ain't never seen too many families that didn't have uh, uh, 
problems. And uh, I don't I don't understand that. I didn't, I didn't even uh, Vicky's daddy died not long ago and I didn't even think nothing about it. None of that. I didn't care. It didn't matter. The rest of the brothers and sisters should have had a doll and I wasn't a kid. It wouldn't have mattered. It wouldn't matter to Vicky either. But he said, speak to my brother that he divide the inheritance with me. And he said unto him, man, who made me a judge or a divider over you? Which meant both of them. Both of them. And he said unto them, take heed and beware of covetousness, for a man's life consisteth not of the abundance of the things which he possesses. A man's life means more than anything this world can give. It's what he said. This Sometimes we think we got to have this, we got to have that, or I do. And uh, I work hard. I worked hard back years ago, and, and I try to come up with enough money to buy whatever it was I wanted, and this, that, and the other. And, and uh, didn't think a thing in the world about what if tomorrow don't come. I never thought about that. So. After he said this, after Jesus said what he said there about a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the things in which he possesses. And you might be saying, Preacher, there may be little kids here that has no idea what you're talking about. Well, listen. I didn't have a dime in my pocket the day I was saved. I didn't have a dime. But I had a spider bicycle that I got for my birthday at home that I could not wait for church to get over before I could get on that thing and I could ride. So even little kids sometimes gets caught up in the things of the world and tries to push away what God is trying to say unto them. He spake a parable unto them, saying, here's the man with six eyes. Somebody said, I preached this something one time, and they said, I, I thought you'd gone crazy. <laughs> I, I, I've read the Bible through they ain't no telling how many times and I, I ain't never seen a parable with a man with six eyes. I said, well, there's one in there. Listen to it. He spake a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. In other words, his garden brought forth so much, it was unbelievable how good of a garden he had, how good of a field that he had. And it brought forth plentiful. And he thought, this man, this, this farmer, thought, and here was the problem. He thought within himself now that's where we get in trouble. That's right, Danny. Amen. When we go to thinking within ourselves that's right. what we're going to do and what we ain't going to do. That's right. Bless your heart, Danny. Because I'm going to tell you something. God's got all power. Amen. God's the one that gave you the breath that you just breathed in. That's right. You, we don't realize that, but he, 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 he's the one that done that's right. it. That's right. Amen. He's the one that done it. He thought within himself, saying, 
What shall keep up with the eyes? Yeah. What shall I do? What shall I do? Because I have no room where to bestow my fruits. And he said this, this will I do. I will pull down my barns and build greater and there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take, take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. How many eyes do you count? Six. Not counting the knees and the, all that, but six times he said, I, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. I'm going to tear down and I'm going to build big. And I'm going to get it to where I can just lay back and just have me a good old time. I'm going to lay back, I'm going to eat, I'm going to drink, and I'm going to be married. But now listen to this. But God said unto him, Thou fool. Yeah. He, called, he called him a fool. The man with six eyes, he got called a fool by Jesus himself. I know this is a parable, but he said, Thou fool. This night thy soul shall be required of thee, meaning that he was going to die right. that night. Yeah. Now what about that? This night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then whose shall those things be which thou hast provided. Because they sure ain't going to do you no good. Because you ain't going to be here. If tomorrow never comes, he called him a fool, so I don't know uh, about his salvation. It, it, it seems like he was, uh, a fool would be somebody that would turn Jesus away. And not think about what tomorrow may hold. You don't worry about tomorrow because Jesus holds tomorrow. Amen. But he just got called a fool. And he said, tonight thy soul will be required of thee. And all this stuff you gathered up and you're going to build barn. All your plans you just made. Who, who's it going to be? Because it ain't going to do you a bit of good. So is he that layeth up treasures for himself and is not rich to, is, and is not rich toward God. If you care more about the things of the world, you're not rich toward God. I'm going to tell you what, I've depended on the Lord for a lot of years. And I'm talking about seriously. We're depending on the Lord, me and Vicki are right now, to the point that uh, she's, she's in pretty foul shape. But we still lie. We still cry. We still have a good time, spiritually speaking, in the Lord. We get to talking about days gone by. We get talking about revivals that we've been in with different ones. I was supposed to have had Clark in a revival one year, and I wound up having to have surgery or something other than couldn't heck it. You don't know what's going to be outside those doors. 
One youth night, I was helping here. And the youth was standing up and testifying. And there was a young man named Jimmy Bennett. Pierce and Betty boy. Y'all, some of y'all remember Pierce and Betty. He stood up and told how proud he was of being a Christian. He, he, he told how proud he was of being Pierce and Betty's son. He was leaving the next morning to go to Panama City. The next morning he was leaving. And sometime up in the morning, Pierce got a call and said that they had been in an accident and Jimmy was killed. If tomorrow never comes, are you ready? I, I, I know that boy was ready. Because I got to hear it the night before how much he thanked the Lord for saving his soul. Amen. And when I heard that he had gotten killed, I thought, Lord, why? He was such a young, spry young man. But nevertheless, thank you for letting me hear him tell his testimony. That's the most valuable thing in your life that you can have. I don't care if you own a cattle on a thousand hills. My God does, but you may own a cattle on a thousand hills. I don't care. That don't mean nothing to me. What I want to hear somebody say is I want to thank the Lord for saving my soul. Amen. Amen. I want to thank the Lord for blessing me yes. with the things that I have here on in this life, on this earth. Yes. What, what you have, what you have acquired, you may say, I work for it. Well, let me tell you something. God gave you what you have right now. Amen. Amen. God blessed you with these little children and gave you the responsibility to bring them up in a way that would be pleasing unto Him. Amen. Amen. God gave it. Yeah. I know you worked, sweated, worked hard for it. But I'm going to tell you something. If tomorrow never comes, if you don't have that testimony that you've been saved is going to be terrible. It's going to be terrible. An eternal terror. Now then, let's go on. I, I didn't mean to get on all that. When once the master of the house, let's see, wait, I'm not reading from over here. And he said unto his disciples, now listen, he turned to his disciples because his disciples witnessed it. He was trying to teach them. And when he turned to his disciples, he was turning to us. He said, what? In this parable, when he turned to his disciples, he was also turning to the generations to come. Because we need to heed what Jesus said. He said, therefore I say unto you, take no thought of uh, uh, for your life what ye shall eat neither for the body what ye shall put on oh, I'll stop
stand in front of the mirror and try to figure out what tie matches and worry about what I'm wearing and all this. And I want to look the best I can. And uh, he said, don't worry about that. Don't put all you all you thought into that. He said that to his disciples. He said, the life is more than meat. And the body is more than raiment. Boy, I wish we had a bunch of ameners in here. <laughs> that turned me up. Somebody offered amen. <laughs> I'm just kidding. If the Lord don't want you to say that, please don't. <laughs> but seriously, seriously, I'll say amen to that myself. This is Jesus himself talking to the disciples, to us. He said, consider the ravens, for they neither sow nor reap, which neither have storehouse nor barn. And God feedeth them. How much more are ye better? How much more are ye worth than the fowls? Than than the fowls, the fowls of the air. How much more are ye worth? Think about it. And which of you, with with taking thought, can add to his stature? One cubic. He said, which which one of y'all can add to your height? Which one of you can do that? I don't want to. I can't. I wear high heel shoes, I guess. But he's talking about the body. If ye then be not able to do that thing, which is least, why take ye thought for the rest? Why take ye thought for the rest? He said, consider the lilies, how they grow. They toil not, they spin not, and yet I say unto you that Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Even old Solomon wasn't as pretty as a lily. He wasn't, he wasn't, he didn't look that good. I'm going to tell y'all something tonight. If tomorrow never comes, are you ready or, or are you like the man with six eyes? I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And I'm going to work this long and then I'm going to retire and then I'm going to do, I'm going to go home and build me a pool and, and I'm going to lay by that pool and just, just take it easy. Has any of us ever said, done that? I have. I have. I thought, I'm going to just, just quit and just lay around the house. And I'm going to eat because I'll get in the way of 300 pounds. <laughs> I don't care. You know, I just want to get to where I don't care. And then God will come to me and say, listen here, boy. I've never let you down. And you ain't going to let me down. You understand that? <laughs> and that's when this old boy gets humbled. Yeah. <laughs> and I forget about all that mess that I'm going to do. Yeah. <laughs> and I'll say, Lord, just give me the strength. I've got, I've got, I've got a heart condition. I got AFib. I've got all this stuff wrong with me. I may hit the ground here any minute. Who knows? 
If I do, you just say, that old boy went home. <laughs> that old boy just went home. I don't consider all this stuff. I try to stay as healthy as I can by taking medicine, by going to the doctor. The doc, uh, the, 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 the God gave us doctors. He's called doctors and nurses out to help us, to be healers, to be a part of the healing process. And, buddy, I have used a bunch of them. <laughs> Eleven surgeries in one year. Eleven surgeries. I was blocked from one end to the other. I, I told somebody the other day, they said, Dan, what all has been wrong with you? I said, well... If I took my clothes off, I look like I've had an autopsy. <laughs> I said it starts right here and it ends at my ankle. I've been cut all the way down. And then I got a big long one right here. But I'm still here. I'm still here. By the grace of God, Brody Hughes. That's why I'm here. That's the only reason I'm here. Yeah, amen. That's the only reason. That, that heart attack that when they had to open me up and do a heart bypass, I'm going to tell you what, I thought I was gone. I was telling Vicki, I believe she was the one that kept me alive. She, she, I wouldn't let her call the ambulance. I said, that STS Cadillac sitting out there in the garage can get me to think Joseph a whole lot faster than he Andy, I said, you just get under the wheel and let's go. It's in the middle of the night. There wasn't no traffic. I looked down. That thing had 140 on it. I looked down one time. We were running 130 miles an hour. <laughs> and the whole time that we were headed down that way, my chest was getting heavier and heavier. And all of a sudden, it just went away. I took a nitroglycerin tablet. It just went away. And we got about to Mac Bar and I said, get off right here and let's go back home. I'm all right. It's that stinking barbecue we eat. <laughs> I just got indigestion. She never let off of it. <laughs> she said, we're going to the office. I was madder than a wedding. I said, Dad, go to the big office, go down there and go through all that mess. When we started circling that Glen Ridge, whatever, you know, where you, you make that big circle, there was a, a, a curtain started coming down, a, a, just a dark, and I, was, I reckon I was passing out or something. And I said, Honey, I'm leaving. Said, don't start that. <laughs> I said, I, I, I can't help it. I'm leaving. And I started telling her things I wish you'd do. You know, I make sure that Valerie gets raised right. This was in 02. Valerie was a sophomore in high school. And I said, be sure she gets raised right and find her a good man. I was telling her all this stuff, and the whole time she was driving with one hand and hitting me with the other. <laughs> and I think her jarring me up probably kept me alive. I don't know. That's one time I was mad she was hitting on me. She said, Hush! I don't want to hear no more. And the last thing I remember was this. She said, Where is the driveway? I can't say what she said. <laughs> she said, Where is the driveway to get into the emergency room to this hospital? I, there's the sign, but I don't see no driveway. And all of a sudden, I, I was fixing to pass out or whatever. I thought I was dying. All of a sudden, I saw hedge bushes coming over the front end of that SDS. <laughs> And I fell over. And I thought, you know, as far as I'm concerned, I'm dead. And uh, anyway, I woke 
gun. And there was a bright light. Just shining so bright. I said, Woo-wee. I can't wait to see what's around here. <laughs> I cannot wait. But I have to notice I was laying. And this big old seven foot nurse he is a man nurse. He looked over me and he said, Mr. Ben, are you awake? I looked up at him and I said, Yeah. I said, This ain't heaven? <laughs> he said, No, but it ain't heaven. <laughs> <laughs> he said, We got you. We got you back. Well, you're going to be all right. We're going to do a heart cat in the morning. We got you stable. You're going to be all right. And, and that's when they had to do the open heart surgery. But anyway, I told that story for the glory of God. Amen. Not for my glory, for His glory. Thank you, Danny. See, I thought I was going to be, I thought I was dead. And when I woke up, I thought I was in heaven. But I tickled the dead when He said, he said, it ain't hell either. So right. I, I was tickled to death when he said that. He knows I was a preacher. They told him I was a preacher. And, and uh, we just had a good old time. I started bawling. I said, where's my wife at? He, he said, she's in the waiting room. in pitiful shape. I said, go get her. You go get her right now. And she came in there and she hugged and she said, I thought I was going to lose you. I said, well, I did too, to be honest with you, but it just wasn't my time. But ever since that happened to me, I thought about if tomorrow never comes, I won't be ready. I won't be ready. And I hope that you tonight have heard something that makes you want to be ready if tomorrow never comes. Some of you may say, well, this is the gloomiest, doomiest message I've ever heard. Ain't nothing gloomy and doomy about it if you know Jesus. We ought to be shouting what we ought to be doing. Because he holds tomorrow. He holds tomorrow. Good and gracious of life. <laughs> you know, they said, don't you worry about all that mess that's wrong with you? Nah. If something goes wrong, I'll go to the doctor. <laughs> but no. No, whenever he calls my name, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. All of my treasures are in heaven. My mom and daddy, my brothers, my sister, most of my family's in heaven. But the main one that I want to see face to face, I'll be down low, but when I look up at it, it's Jesus Christ. <laughs> the man that took my sins away were the timbers crossed. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, for the tempers cross. Show me the cross and I'll find my way home. <laughs> God bless y'all. I love you. I probably said too much. I don't know. But if I did, I ain't apologize. <laughs> I just, y'all just can't just, just, just say I don't like that person. <laughs> and know that I love you. I don't care. If you don't like me, I still love you. That's right. I've, I've been to churches where people didn't like me. Some of them didn't like me. You know what I'd do? I'd love them twice as much as I'd love the rest of them. And it wasn't me long that either love me or leave. So, you know? But most of the time, it's love. Love can take care of a lot of things. It can mend a lot of things in people's lives. It really can. I'm on a hush, but these men come down here. This altar is open, and I hope that you said, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do 
him, hey, if I'm going to do that, I'm going to, you know, do all this stuff. Hey, put that out of your mind right now. You, you, you be concerned about your body. You be concerned about your soul. You be concerned about what's going to be the leading of this old world one day. And we're all going to be We're all going to be Yeah, that may be morbid or whatever you want to call it, but we're going to do it one day. And if you don't know Jesus, your personal Savior, if you don't have a spot, a lot of people don't remember the day they saved. A lot of people don't remember uh, the time they were saved. But they seem like all of them remember the spot. So you got to have a spot to where you were made spotless. And if you've got that, don't worry about tomorrow. Jesus has got it already. As we stand and sing, and I ask the pastor and Clark to come out here. Follow the Lord. Follow the Spirit. Amen. I think somebody needs to move. That's right, Daddy. Somebody needs to move. They may be to go and say, I love you. They may be to go just to say, I love you. They may be just to, just to thank somebody for being your friend. I'm bad to do that. I'm bad to go to people. I got a little message from that man right there that, that set me on fire. He said, I love you, preacher. And that's all it says. A little <laughs> message from David. And I see you right now. When I read that, I thought, Lord, I can't wait for revival time. I know it's coming soon. This was way before revival time, but I knew then. We was going to have a good, I was going to have a good time. Yeah. I knew I was going to have a good time, and I have. Yeah. And I appreciate y'all putting up with me. But I love all, every single person here. I love you, and I'll do anything I can for you. But I can't say. I can't say. Uh, Lord has to do that. So I'm going to hug y'all. Come on. That's what we say. 557. Thank you.
They'll walk with you right up here at the front. You can bow the knees of your heart and ask Jesus to save you, and he will. Yeah. Or you can bow right there where you're at. Right. I've heard so many people say, what in the world am I going to say to Jesus? I didn't know nothing to say, but Jesus saved me. Me too. He just took that old bad feeling, that lost feeling that I had. He took it away. And peace came in. And then I wanted just to stand up and say that I've been saved by the marvelous grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's serious enough. Yeah. It's serious. What Danny has spoken to us tonight, it's serious. Life can change so fast. Yeah. Just be ready has been spoken unto us tonight. So we're going to sing another verse of song. I don't know about no one else in the house but me tonight. That's right. I know that I've been saved. So tonight, you know if you've never been saved and you know if you need to come. That's you right. do. That's right. So as we sing this verse of song, if you want to turn to one next to you and say, would you go and meet to the altar? or you pray right here where I'm at, you just need to move and be saved while you have this opportunity here tonight as we sing. On the side. Hey. 
orange frog yeah. thing, you know? And I'm just thinking, my life changed in that split second. I was in my 30s when I got saved, Bless but it is. changed in that split second. And, and I just don't understand why nobody just don't want to have That's right. Amen. Bless you, Amen. Amen. Anyone else? A word?